Authentic, genuine, bona fide. How do you know that note from Elvis your Aunt Matilda shows you is authentic? Or that an unexpected email you receive from a desperate prince in Nigeria isn't? Authenticity, in the end, is tied closely to trust. Making judgments about what to trust is something we all do every day, often without realizing it. This video has two parts. The first part will look at what authenticity is and why it's important with digital files. The second part will give more specific steps you might want to take to make sure digital files you create or manage stay authentic. First, let's consider historical documents. Seen in museums, libraries, and archives around the world, these documents are there because experts take educated guesses about authenticity when they examine the paper and ink used, or look at documentation about who's had the documents over time. When you look at a historical document in a museum, you partly trust that it's authentic because of those experts. But digital files are another story. How are they kept authentic? There are actually a lot of people thinking and worrying about this idea. Think about the email of the President of the United States, or financial databases submitted as evidence in a court of law. Generally, a digital file is considered authentic if 1. It is exactly the same as when it was created, or 2. Any changes to it and the reasons behind those changes have been carefully documented. You probably aren't managing the President's email, so you may be wondering how authenticity matters to you. First, if you create or manage digital files, consider how important it is that they remain authentic for the future. If they're files at your job, someone else may determine how important it is for you. If they're personal files, decide whether or not you want to help ensure their authenticity for future family members. Second, keep in mind that digital files can be easily changed in ways that aren't immediately apparent. I'm not only talking about hackers or people with malicious intent, I'm also talking about bit rot, in which the ones and zeros, the basic elements in a file, are unknowingly altered because of changes to the entire system over time. Third, Understand that you can take measures to help preserve authenticity. At a very simple level, you're already doing that by watching this video and becoming aware that files can change and that those changes may make others question their trustworthiness. Other measures include creating and managing checksums and digital signatures for your file, as well as planning ahead for file security and storage. In the second part of this video, I'm going to give you some measures you might want to take to ensure the authenticity of your digital files. Keep in mind that the following suggestions are for files you're done with or use very, very rarely but want to preserve, not necessarily ones you're still working with on a daily basis. You may want to assess what kinds of digital files you create and which of those require the steps I'm about to describe. First. Consider keeping a list of information about your files in a separate text file or in a comma-separated or tab-delimited file. You can create these types of files from word processing or spreadsheet software. This information, called metadata, might include the file name, when it was created, by whom, the software used to create it, and even a checksum, which we'll talk about in a minute. Second, you may want to consider keeping an audit trail document that describes what you've done with your files over time. You might move to a new computer, external hard drive, internet-based or cloud storage, or do a large-scale reorganization of your files. Put that information in your audit trail document so others in the future have more information about what you've done. Even the smallest amount of context you can provide for the files you create, whether through metadata or an audit trail, may help someone in the future understand how authentic the files are. 
If you'd like to have even more assurance about the authenticity of your files, or if your company requires it, you may want to calculate hash values or checksums for your files and keep those values with your metadata. A checksum is a brief series of letters and numbers that is almost 100% unique to a particular file. To calculate a checksum, you submit a file to a program that looks at the underlying ones and zeros of the file, performs a detailed calculation on them, and supplies you with the checksum. If any small one or zero gets corrupted or damaged, the checksum will completely change. So, the next time you run the same program against your file, the checksum will be different. Comparing the old checksum to the new one will indicate that something has happened. It can't tell you what that something was, but you will know that the file has changed. You may also consider using a digital signature for files whose authenticity is especially crucial. A digital signature is a checksum that is also encrypted, providing an additional layer of security. Many software programs will allow you to apply your own digital signature to a file. Most institutions will be able to classify the files that require a digital signature. They tend to be financial documents, personnel files, or administrative files that have the potential for being used in court. But maintaining authenticity of personal files may be important too. Consider wills or real estate documents, for example. Finally, you can follow other best practices for digital preservation to help keep your files around and usable for the long term. Our website can help you with some of those practices. I hope this video has made you consider the authenticity of the files you create or manage. The bottom line is that authentic digital files require thoughtful and long-term care. You can't put the letter on a shelf and hope for the best, not if you want future generations to know that Elvis lives.